Once again, DLT diving in and getting a sick batch of knives. Starting with TFFHs here, a couple of TFF1s in the middle. We'll talk about the differences in a few minutes. And then into Fat Daddies. So we have all three variations of the TFF1 series here. Just fan freaking tastic. I'm going to sweep over. Micro Praetorian, on belay custom here, never one done like that, one off, one of a kind, another on belay, some Proxima, pretty classic, pretty straightforward, kind of bare bones, one of the last full size, full thickness, 0 0.260 inch thick marauders, a fixed Theseus, and I'm going to pan right down to something brand new that probably hardly anybody has seen yet, you, yep, there it is. USMC fighter, fixed blade, leather sheath. We'll talk about that shortly here. But just a little brief overview of what's headed off to DLT Trading. I am now gonna hand the camera off to my man, Kevin, and jump in. Hey! All right, so Paul at DLT Trading, Paul Edget. Hey, how are you? Hi, hi! Everybody else at DLT Trading, everybody out there watching. Um, they're in Marionette, Wisconsin. If you don't already know, you should. One of our top-notch resellers. 877-622-2397. Um, let's dive back in again and talk about these knives headed Paul's way. So these are categorized based on the different models. And let me just do something real quick here. All right. So we have all three TFF1 series knives lined up. The TFFH, the TFF1, and the Fat Daddy. And what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to put the H in the middle and kind of show you the evolution of where we were and where we are now. So the Fat Daddy originally was the thick offshoot of the TFF1 series. This was Greg's first tactical fighting folder. TFF1, tactical fighting folder slash one. I think still his favorite folding knife, uh, aside from the Praetorian series. Uh, the TFF1 here is sporting uh, Betsy Ross uh, tattered vintage American flag, laser engraved on the handle. D2 PVD blade, you know it's TFF1, old school if it's D2. A blue anodized spring to complement the handle. And then the Fat Daddy was the offshoot, it was the thick, fat, Praetorian tie version of the TFF1 series knife. This is an S35 tumble drop point blade. They're all drop point, I, I should say. I don't even know why I should bring up the drop point because that is the only way this knife has come or will come. PVD hardware, it's a standard stainless steel hardware PVD clip. Again, everything is serialized from here on out. Even the Fat Daddy, even though it's discontinued, these parts that we ran through are serialized. And then the Evolution, the hybrid of the two, Ergo H, TFFH, and this one here started off as a PVD handle and spring. We added in, I should say Joe added in, custom kind of crater-like hammered sculpting. It has a violet, kind of a violet to a subtle bronze fade, and it fades off down into a flat PVD finish. So there's the H in between the Fat Daddy and the TFF1. Oh, let me get these back where they went. Kind of like, feel like I'm shifting cards here. All right, so the TFFH, we have one PVD with some sculpting. We have another S35 tumbled with a straight up PVD on the handle and spring. Custom sculpted, this is new, this is different. Some of you may love it, some of you may not love it. It took me a couple days to get used to it and I dig it, man. It is not technically contoured. But the fluting done on the perimeters of these handles absolutely make it a one-off. I've never seen anything quite like it. So bronze anodized handle and spring with reverse, almost reverse contouring fluting around the perimeters of the scales. The last TFFH here, full on sculpting, uh, whether you want to call it lightning, lazy river, I don't know. Uh, you can just call it unbelievably cool. S35 tumble blade and a violet sculpted handle and spring. Of the TFF1 versions, they're both D2 PVD blades. The first one I've already shown you. The second one is all PVD coated with stainless steel hardware and clip. So tuxedo version here. 
of the Fat Daddy variety, we have almost all S35 and 13V. The first one, S35 PVD, a very subtle swirly flame on the handle and up, oh, just on the handle. Because if you are just tuning in for the first time, as far as what we are not including anymore, is a flamed spring. As it heats up the titanium, has a tendency to warp it and cause challenges with assembly. Here's a straight up bronze handle and spring, PVD hardware and clip. S35 tumbled PVD, you can see a little bit of wear, a little bit of uh, marking on the blade from where the tumbling process has been applied. Some flaming, mottled flaming on the whole handle, bronze anodized spring. Custom sculpting on the handle and spring. This one is the 3V PVD variation. Kind of looks like a camo result here that's uh, got some fluting down the handle, down the spring. Really cool, unique anodizing here. And the last Fat Daddy here, S35 Tumbled. It's got a bronze handle and spring, kind of a deep hammered crater fading into nothing. I really like it when Joe does that. You can see the, the variations here. We'll go here later. But down on row number two, Michael Praetorian G, we're all pretty familiar with this. The smallest version of the dollar sign. This is part of the sh uh, very short series of knives that we've done where the D2 is stamped on the back of the blade, the dollar sign is on the front. PVD drop point blade, black G10 handle, PVD spring. Again, the embellé here, we uh, have done a couple of specialty embellé knives with Paul at DLT. Um, I don't know of anybody else where we've allowed to change the variations, um, but here it is, S35 PVD blade, polished and flamed handle, PVD spring. Absolutely have not seen anything like that. All blacked out, no, tuxedo, S35 PVD handle, blade, spring, and standard stainless steel hardware and clip. Of the Proxima, we have a couple just very classic, straightforward, no custom, no sculpting, one tumbled, one blue anno, one bronze anno, all S35 PVD blades. Oh, we have a flamed clip on the tumbled. Looks like on the blue and on the bronze. So flamed clips on all three. And of the Marauder, again, discontinued. Probably one of the very, very last Marauders to leave the factory here. Unless we have a few parts where we could put together a knife it's got a 3V Vulcan Tanto blade, PVD handle and spring. The grooves have been put in post-process, flamed hardware, and flamed clip. Again, you can tell if it's uh, titanium hardware, if it has the TI or the M logo or some sort of inscription, and there is none here, so that is stainless steel. Of the fixed blade variety, Paul, we have a fixed Theseus headed out S35 PVD blade. The hardware's been PVD coated as well. Coyote handle and sheath and let's talk about this right here our new usmc fighter i wish greg was here to talk about it because he's way more knowledgeable on the description of the knife but obviously our version of the very heavy duty usmc fixed blade i don't want to get into the variation but you see the usmc stamped on that is milled in these knives are made with s35 pvd the hilt is also PVD coated, the, I'm sorry, yep, the hilt and the pommel. Form fitted, we have custom made in-house G10 form fitted grips and a leather sheath. And inside this knife will be a description of how to, I know this sounds crazy, but how to insert your fixed blade into a leather sheath. It is not like Kydex, it's going to be much different. Greg's already filmed the video, so if you have any questions, please consult the video and contact DLT if you want to get your hands on one of the very first USMC fighter knives out there and available. I gotta tell you, this knife is a big win. It's beautiful, it's great in the hand. The sheath is custom made to it. So um, reach out to Paul at DLT Trading, see what you get your hands on. Always stuff headed out there away. Thank you for doing business with us, Paul. Thank you everybody for watching. And until the next time, I'm out.